And welcome to Filmmaking Today. I'm your host, Bojan Dulabik. So in this episode, I want to talk about something that a lot of us are faced with these days, a lot of us editors, and that's working with 4K footage. Now, some of you have probably never worked with 4K or 5K footage before, and, you know, it might seem intimidating to when you think about it, because you might think you need to upgrade your entire system, get new, um, you know, new computer and all that kind of stuff. And it um, doesn't have to be. It all depends, obviously, what you have right now. Now, sure, you can always drop three, four, five thousand dollars and get a new system that's, um, you know, that's got all the processing power and all that stuff. But you might actually just have to do a few uh, relatively inexpensive upgrades to be able to work with 4K. So let me tell you what I got. So I have a Mac Pro early 2009 model with 266 gigahertz quad-core processor. One of the first things I did a while ago was upgrade my RAM. I was running on eight gigs, which really is not enough, so I upgraded to 32 gigs. Another thing that I recently did, and I'll do a video about that too, I upgraded my graphics card. So I was still using the graphics card that came with my Mac Pro, which is really uh, not a good card. It was an NVIDIA, can't remember the name, but it was a 500 um, megabyte graphics card. It's just it, not good, just crappy. So I upgraded that to the NVIDIA GTX 660 3 gigabyte graphics card. Now, if you have a Mac Pro, I urge you to, if you're upgrading graphics cards, look at the NVIDIA cards because uh, OS X, as of, I think, Mavericks, or it could be uh, the one before, I'm not sure, uh, they support now, to my knowledge, most, if not all, NVIDIA graphics cards. So. With this one, I didn't have to install any drivers, nothing. I just installed it and uh, off you go. The only thing that you're going to lose is that welcoming screen with the Apple logo when the computer starts up, which really I couldn't care less. But everything else works fine and uh, it, it there's a difference. There's a significant difference in speed and performance. And like I said, I'll do a video shortly about that as well, where I'll go into details. So the next thing is USB. Unless you're going to be using the internal drives to work with the footage, which is fine. If not, get a USB 3 card. I recently did a video about that. They're very inexpensive. The 4K footage that I'm working with, it's actually on an external drive. And it's hooked up via USB 3.0. And it works fine. So... That's another thing. And then the other thing is an SSD drive. I'm using a 240 Kingston SSD drive, and that's just for my operating system and all my apps. You will notice a significant speed increase. So if you do these things, you'll be fine to work with 4K and 5K footage. I've been working also with 5K footage on this project, and it works fine. So once you're in the editing system, the main thing to do is lower the quality for the timeline to 1 8th. Because if you play it back in full quality, it won't give you a smooth playback. It will stutter. Depending on your system, you might be able to do it with one-fourth. Again, it just depends on your processing power. But I found that in my case, one-eighth works fine. And you're not going to notice any quality drop. Because it's 4K, and unless you're viewing it on a 4K display, you'll be fine. So you can work with it. You don't have to convert the file to anything else. You can work with it natively but just drop the quality to that. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and again, this depends on your computer speed, your overall speed, is rendering time. If you're just working with the project, you're just editing it, you're not doing any effects with it, rendering will be obviously much faster, but if you start doing color grading or you start working with it in After Effects, which is what I did on the teaser for this project, rendering time will significantly increase. So in my case, one minute, and again, keep in mind, the entire project was also tweaked in After Effects. It took about four hours to render. On a feature that's going to be even longer, that's the downside of working with these massive files. But again, if you're not doing any effects to it, it's, you're just doing the editing on it, it's going to be obviously a lot less. That's all I got. Stay tuned for more videos about this. And if you want to watch the final teaser of the project that I'm working on, just click on the link below in the notes. And stay tuned for more videos. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel. And follow me on all the social media platforms. My name is Bojan Dulabik.